We are halfway through and we're done with the seals and we're done with the trumpets and all that's left is seven bowls but it's going to be a while before we get to those bowls a lot of things are going to happen and chapter 12 actually takes kind of a step back in time and is going to talk about things that had already happened during the time that the letter was written and so we are going to look at it is kind of an unfolding of a little bit of history and, and talking about how they got to where they are right now so uh, just a little heads up on what we're going to be learning today <clears throat> we're going to have two <clears throat> main characters there's going to be a woman she's pregnant about to have a child and she's in a pretty helpless condition and then we're going to have an enormous red dragon on the other side and so let's read about those two characters and let's go ahead and get three readers and is TJ ready okay uh, Shelly you want to be our first one so go ahead and take it to Shelly who's gonna be our second reader raise your hand real quickly who's got it okay John's got it and then Debbie wants to do the third one okay so Shelly would you mind reading verses 1 through 6 for us please yes just a second A great sign appeared in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun and the moon under, the, under her feet and on her head covered of twelve stars. And she was with the child and she carried out being in labor and in pain to give birth. The, then another sign appeared in heaven and be, behold a great red dragon having seven heads and ten horns and on the heads were seven deities or de diadems and his tail uh, swept away a third of the stars of heaven and threw them into the earth and the dragon stood before the woman and who was about to give birth so that when she gave birth he might devour the child and she gave birth to the son, a male child, who is to rule all the nations with a rod of iron. And her child was caught up to God uh, and to his throne. Then the, woman, then the woman fled into the wilderness where she had a place, to prepare, a place prepared by God so that there she would be nourished and uh, nourished for 1,260 days. Thank you. All right. So let's start with the woman. It says this woman is clothed with the sun. The moon is under her feet. And on her head is a crown. And the word crown is Stephanos. What kind of crown is that class? Crown of victory. Okay, the Stephanos. She's wearing the crown of victory with 12 stars in it. <clears throat> this woman has the sun and the moon and the stars. Uh, the fact that the woman shines with the sun. Uh, Cody, could you turn on that last light uh, over there? I missed that one. Everybody's straining to see their Bibles. There we go. The... Being clothed with the sun sounds a lot like Jesus. In Matthew chapter 17, verse 2 says, And he was transfigured before them, his face shone like the sun. And so to shine like the sun would be a representation of Jesus. <clears throat> the moon under her feet, the, the stars in her crown. Luke 21, verse 25 says, There will be signs in the sun and the moon and the stars. That was Jesus speaking. And so we see the fulfillment here. Uh, this woman is the fulfillment. She is uh, uh, clothed with Jesus, with his radiance, and yet she is not Jesus, obviously. Uh, who is this woman? The church is the most common answer. And it's a correct answer, but I'm going to give you a better one, all right? It's not bad. But I'm going to give you a better answer. 
The woman is the kingdom. Old and new covenant. That's a better answer. And you'll see why I answer it that way. Church is okay, all right? But since he's kind of reviewing some things that went on beforehand, and we're even going to go back to a little before the advent of the church. And so to say this is the kingdom, old and new covenant, is a little bit better answer. It fits the text. And, you know, listen to the text, and by the end, see if you agree with that assessment. Uh, she is going to give birth to a child. She's in labor pains, ready to give birth. Then in verse 3 we have this enormous, great red dragon. He's a red dragon. What does red mean? War, violence, aggression, fighting. It's a very very forceful color. This is a red dragon. He has seven heads and ten horns and seven diadems. Seven is the number for completeness. Head stands for knowledge. It has another significance which we'll talk about. Would you let me wait till the next chapter to talk about that one because it'll mean more in chapter 13. But for now the head stands for knowledge and so to have seven heads means to have complete knowledge now the dragon is Satan and I always get told this Curtis you just have such amazing insights how do you figure these things out how do you know that the dragon is Satan well I read verse 9 okay that's how I figured it all out verse 9 says and the great dragon who was thrown down the serpent of old who is called the devil or Satan isn't that hard? <laughs> Guess who the dragon is? Yeah, this isn't hard. Just got to read. That's all. And so this great, enormous red dragon is Satan, and he has seven heads, which means he has complete knowledge. You know what that means? Satan is not stupid. Satan knows so much more than you and I know. Way, way more. He's smart. He's very, very smart. He'd been around a lot longer than you and I have. And it's, it's high time we recognize that. Now, I didn't say he's all-powerful. I didn't say he's more knowledgeable than God. But he's smart. Huh? He's dumb. Why would he want to get kicked out of heaven? He did make a dumb move, didn't he? Yeah. John says, why did he get kicked out of heaven? Because he was dumb. Yeah, he tried to be selfish, you know, and tried to, to gain. Yes, Larry. As we, as we think about Satan, we need to thank God that he will not allow him to tempt us beyond that which we That's right. Yeah. Larry pointed out that God would not allow Satan to tempt us beyond what we are able. And so we need to be thankful to God. But let's never underestimate Satan. Uh, we need the scouting report. We need to know what the enemy's like. And the enemy is very, very smart. And he's smart enough not to attack us in areas that we're strong. He's going to attack us in areas that we're weak. Because he's smart. He knows what he's doing. And so uh, we need to be on our guard against him. This enormous dragon has seven heads and he has ten horns. Horns stand for power. Ten is the number for what? Human completeness. Got all ten fingers, right? Humanly complete. He is uh, smart. He is, has humanly complete power. On his head are seven diadems. My translation goes ahead and transliterates the word. The Greek word is diadem. Uh, yours may say, just say crown. But this is different than the Stephanos that the woman is wearing. This enormous dragon is wearing seven diadems. He's wearing the royal crown, seven again. Perfect, complete, royal authority. That's what Satan has. He has authority over the rulers 
of this world. He is the God of this world. And that's what he's saying. And so, <clears throat> in this corner, <laughs> we have a pregnant woman. And in the other corner, we have an enormous red dragon. Who's going to win? I mean, it looks pretty bleak, doesn't it? That's the picture. It's, that's intentional. There is no way that the woman is supposed to win, right? She's, she's in a, a bad situation. She's terribly outnumbered. And yet, something happens in the picture. Uh, this this uh, dragon is so enormous in verse 4, he swings his tail, he knocks a third of the stars out of the heavens and throws them to the earth. What did we decide that stars stand for in Revelation? Angels, okay? A third. Is it literally a third? No, because there are myriads and myriads of angels. That would be a lot of angels. But a fraction. It's just a fraction. He doesn't take all the angels. But he knocks a third of them to the earth. And we'll, we'll deal with these, uh, these fallen angels here in a little bit. And the dragon stood before the woman, waiting for her to give birth so that she might devour her child. Now the woman gives birth to the child. And the child, by the way, uh, we're going to find out that he is Christ in verse 5. He is the, a male child. He rules all the nations. Look at chapter 19 of Revelation. Nineteen and verse fifteen. From his mouth comes a sharp sword, so that with it he will strike down the nations, and he will rule them with a rod of iron, and he treads the winepress of the fierce wrath of the Almighty. Uh, verse fifteen is talking about Christ. We'll confirm that when we get there. Uh, you can read the context. So going back to the one who rules all the nations. This male child whom the woman gives birth to is none other than Christ. Now here is the reason why when somebody asks you who does the woman stand for, to say the kingdom, Old and New Covenant, is a better answer. When was Christ born? During the Old Covenant or the New Covenant? Under the Old Covenant. Okay? He was raised a Jew. And so that's why that's a little bit better answer. Jesus is inspiring John to send a revelation that's reviewing some things that have already happened even at this time. And that is the birth of Jesus. Jesus is sending the revelation. He's talking about himself. He is the child. There's no way that the woman or the child who is helpless can win against this enormous dragon. Uh, when Jesus was born... Did anybody try to kill him? Who? King Herod, right? King Herod. Satan working through King Herod, would you give me that? Tried to kill, tried to stop Jesus from the very time he was born. But I see a word in verse 5 that makes all the difference. And her child was caught up to God. There's the word that makes all the difference. That's why a helpless child is safe, because of God. And then look at the next verse, verse 6. The woman fled in the wilderness, and there she had a place prepared by God. That one word makes all the difference. That's why she is victorious, even in a helpless situation. Now, do you see how this applies to the first century Christians? You see how encouraging this would be? Because they felt like, hey, we're up against this enormous red dragon and we're just a, a pregnant lady. Hey, we're just helpless. That's how they felt. But God. God comes into the equation. Everything changes. That's the picture here. This place that uh, she is, this woman is able to flee to, is called a wilderness. Uh, we will encounter that word again later. It just, it just means a place prepared by God. Uh, she would be nourished for 1,260 days. 
1,260 days. 1,260 days. You know, that's 42 months. By the reckoning of the Hebrew calendar, which is 360 days long, not 365 like ours. Theirs was 360. 1,260 days is three and a half years. You don't believe it, check it on your calculator. If you get a different answer, your calculator is wrong. Because right? it's 1,260, I checked it, alright? Yours is wrong or mine's wrong. That's also, three and a half years is also times, time, and a half a time. Three and a half is half a seven. What does it mean, class? Incomplete. For, she's going to be nourished, but only for an incomplete period of time. A time that's going to end. Okay? Or, uh, not even really a time. To a degree, she's going to be protected. Right? The church is going to be protected by God to a degree. The, uh, oh, we didn't read that far. Okay. John, are you ready to read? Brother, would you read verses 7 down through verse 12? And there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon fought in his angels, and prevailed not. Neither was their place found any more in heaven. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out to the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now has come salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ. For the accuser of our brethren is cast down, which accuses, accused them before our God day and night. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony, and they loved not their lives unto the death. Therefore rejoice, ye heavens, ye that dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea. For the devil has come down unto you, having great wrath, because he knoweth that he hath but a short time. All right. There's war in heaven. The angels. Stay here, TJ. <laughs> There's war in heaven. Michael and his angels are fighting against the dragon and his angels. And dragon and his angels can't win. They lose. And they are cast down. Remember the stars that were cast down? All right. Here they are. Those who are cast down with Satan. Uh, his henchmen, his demons, if you will. And they are all cast down to the earth and thrown down. And then the loud voice from heaven, salvation, power, and the kingdom of our God and the authority of his Christ have come, have come. What tense is that? That's past tense, all right? And look at that list, salvation, power, and the kingdom. Was the kingdom there when this was written? Oh, you bet it was. The kingdom had come already by the time this was re written. For the accuser, and who's this? That's Satan. The accuser of our brethren has been thrown down. He accuses before God day and night. Just picture that. Satan is up there all the time. Uh, did you see he did that? Hmm? Yeah, he did it. Yeah, she, she just did that. He's the, he doing that day and night. All the time he is accusing us. That's Satan. That, he thinks that's his job. He's got to be accusing us all the time. He's the watchman. He just makes sure he reports to God anything that we do wrong. But we are able to overcome in verse, in verse 11 because of three things. Look closely at the three things. We overcome because, number one, because of the blood of the Lamb. First and of foremost importance, the blood of the Lamb. But also... Because of the word of their testimony. The word of our testimony. Our, our preaching. Our sharing of the gospel. Helps us to overcome. And then thirdly, they didn't love their lives so much as to shrink back even when they were facing death. 
And so their courage, uh, their, their willingness to, to be diligent and to, to not give in to their fears. Those three things is what allowed them to stand up against this devil who is so strong and so amazingly powerful. And because of this reason, the heavens and you who dwell in them, woe to the earth and the seas because of the devil has come down to you great wrath knowing that he has only a short time so why is, ang is Satan so angry he doesn't have very long and he's going to hell and he wants to take as many with him as he possibly can guess what we don't have very long either and we're going to heaven and we need to take as many with us as we possibly can. So that puts us at odds with Satan. He is our enemy. He's our only enemy. Our battle is not against flesh and blood, amen? It's against Satan. That's who our battle is against. And so that's who we need to be warring against, church. Warring against Satan. All right. Any questions so far? Am I going too fast? No. Logan. Okay, let me repeat that uh, for the sake of the, the video. Uh, Logan mentioned that the wilderness has a strong uh, meaning to the Jewish people. They wandered 40 years in the wilderness and all that was about learning to depend on God, which I was going to mention that too. Uh, Jesus also went to the wilderness where he was tempted so yeah so the wilderness does have and just take a concordance and just look up wilderness and you'll see it has quite a significance so thank you brother good point anything else yes. in, your note here, in your note on uh, it said Satan did everything he could to stop Jesus from going to the cross just reinforces over here that he had that knowledge mm, yes had the foreknowledge he knew what Jesus came to the earth to do and he knew the the death blow that that would deal to Satan very good point yeah and so yeah from the beginning it just shows how how smart Satan is he tried everything to try to get Jesus to not go to the cross he tried to kill him when he was born. He tried to tempt him. He offered him all the kingdoms of the world. Uh, he did everything he could to try to dissuade him from being up on that cross. Because they knew that was, that was his end. So, good point. Any others? All right. Appreciate it. Did you have another one, Logan? <laughs> okay, go ahead. Go.
Okay, very good. Uh, Logan's point was not only did Satan attack Jesus when he was born, but even before he was born, tried to cut off his lineage. That just shows how wise Satan is. Uh, several times during the lineage of Christ, it almost ended. That promise that there would be a descendant of, of David, that uh, the Messiah had to come from the tribe of Judah and from the lineage of David. And time and time again, it looked like, oh, oh just barely made it. Just barely made it. And that just shows Satan's hand. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, Jack said we've gone through our dark ages and under the Old Testament there was a period of dark ages where they'd lost the word of God, you know, and had to, to reestablish everything. So, yeah, very good. All right, let's, uh, let's go ahead and knock out the rest of the chapter here. Debbie, would you mind reading verses 13 through the end? And when the dragon saw that he was cast into the earth, he persecuted the woman which brought forth the man-child. And to the woman were given two wings of great eagle that she might fly into the wilderness into her place where she is nourished for a time and times and half a time from the face of the serpent. And the serpent cast out of his mouth water as a flood after the woman, that he might cause her to be carried away of the flood. And the earth helped the woman, and the earth opened her mouth and swallowed up the flood which the dragon cast out of his mouth. And the dragon was wrought with the woman and went to make war with the remnant of her seed, which keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. So now the dragon is fighting against the woman. And again, the, the woman is very weak and vulnerable. But <clears throat> she's given two wings to fly away. Wow. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's just pretty amazing. Uh, wonder who was behind that. God. Okay. That's God's hand in things. Protecting his church. But it is for, she's going to be nourished for a time, times and half a time. A time is one, times is two, and a half is what? Three and a half, three and a half, half of seven, an incomplete period of time, or an incomplete uh, degree to which she is nourished. And she is kept from the presence of the serpent, and so the serpent just opens its mouth and, and spews forth this river of water. What a strange scene. I wonder which mouth it was. He's got seven heads, you know. Maybe it was all of them. I don't know. Okay, but he just tries. But the earth, the earth helps out the woman. The earth doesn't like Satan either, apparently. So, uh, it, and none of this is literal. You understand that, right? But it's just showing this picture of Satan trying again and again to stifle the woman who is the kingdom, Old and New Covenant, trying to stifle her, but he can't. Didn't Jesus say that the gates of Hades will not prevail against the church? I think he said that. And that's true. He can't get the woman. So what does he do next? He turns in verse 17 to the rest of her children who keep the commandments. Now who's that? That's us. That's us. He can't get the church. He can't get the kingdom. The kingdom is, is rock solid. It is a rock that fills the whole earth and there's no stopping it. So what does he do? He tries to pick us off individually. He is a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. And a roaring lion tries to pick off the weak. Tries to pick off the ones that have strayed from the herd a little ways. That's what a lion does. Goes for that easy prey. And so make sure you're not easy prey. And if you know somebody who's easy prey, help them to come back into the herd. 
get back into the flock get away from that temptation of Satan because he is angry his time is short and he is trying to stifle us we need to keep the commandments and we need to hold to the testimony of Jesus that's our responsibility when John received this revelation from Jesus on the island of Patmos he wrote it down on parchment animal skin dried out to write on with a quill and ink that's how he would have written it when it was all written out he would have rolled it up in the scroll and handed it to the courier who took it to the seven churches of Asia Minor as that scroll reached each church it was unrolled and read to the church and guess what they didn't read well let's study chapter 1 verse 20 today no the entire thing was read to them think about that the entire thing was read to people who were for the most part illiterate but they understood apocalyptic language they knew what it meant and so they only had to hear it once and they got it I'm so envious how about you here we are studying our brains out trying to learn what this is about but I'm hoping to get to the point where you will be able to read Revelation all the way through chapter 1 through chapter 22 and know exactly what it's talking about I hope you can do that with the first 11 chapters already but I'm hoping by the end you will be able to sit down and to read it all the way through and know exactly what it's talking about because that's how it was written it is one revelation all the way through we have to break it down like this to study it just because we don't know we're, we're learning this stuff but that's the goal is to get to that point so keep those of you who are reading through revelation every week I know several of you are doing that still I ask you to do that at the very beginning of the class keep doing that because you're training yourself to, to see the whole picture all at once keep doing that 